Brian McCarthy here from Bold and Break. We have a very exciting tutorial today. I've been excited to share this one. There's no plugins. We're going to be creating a planet with atmosphere and animation. Let's have a look at what we're going to be making. Okay, so we already have our star field set up. If you want to know how to make the star field, please go to the previous tutorial, which will be in the description below. There's an extended version of that, which is not necessarily needed for this, but it might add some style to the star field. So let's get started. Uh, create a new comp, call this fractal base. And then create a new solid, call this planet surface. We are going to use fractal noise. Surprise, surprise. So with fractal noise, it's going to help us create this atmosphere and surface material and texture. To start getting the planet to look right, let's change the fractal type to dynamic progressive and the noise type to spline. Bring up the contrast to about 125. Drop down your transform layer. Bring the scaling up to about 120. We also want to animate this. so. Let's click the stopwatch and evolution, bring it down to the bottom and just rotate it once for now. And let's also animate sub offset, click the stopwatch and just move it along the X axis. Okay, so let's collapse that for now. We might go back to it and use turbulence place on this layer, bring our amount down to 40 and the size down to 50 and maybe just bring up the complexity to 1.2 just a little bit and we want to then duplicate this layer and call it sub and then we want to change the blending mode of our planet surface to darken and select your planet surface sub and this is where you'll start to see the atmosphere and texture of the planet come together so first we want to expand our transform panel bring the scale to 100 and then change our noise type to soft linear and invert it now you start to see this really come together here i think the animation might be a little bit too fast here so we're going to have to slow it down on both the top layer and bottom layer. We need to slow down the movement of the sub offset. So I've deleted both keyframes. So we just copy keyframes we create from the top layer and just apply them to our planet surface sub. So let's get the stopwatch, click it, bring it to the end. We just need to slow down that. Let's maybe bring it to uh, 400. So let's expand our menus, go to subsurface, have both keyframes selected, copy, and just paste it, and it will do the same. So this is looking, this is looking good at the moment. You can see what we're trying to do with this, we're getting this wavy like distortion. So just to just a note, let's change our displacement type to turbulent smoother on both. OK, so uh, what's happening here is the darken uh, blending mode from our fractal type on our top layer is targeting the luminance channels. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So these channels here, these really bright spots, within the fractal below, you'll see if we change it to darken, it targets them and it blends the fractal type into those bright areas in our fractal type. You can get a massive amount of variance by just playing with the settings and you'll see how as we progress through this tutorial, because this is kind of our base layer for the, the texture and breakup of the atmosphere on our planet. So we're going to select both these layers. We're going to hold shift control C. We're going to change this to planet base. 
Now, we want to find edges. And this should be fine for now. And we want to use CC glass. Now, for the purpose of making sure everything looks as close to the final render as possible, I would recommend keeping your preview settings on full for this. Because After Effects is dealing with so many layers and colors and information that we're piling on with these effects, sometimes it won't look like it will in the final render. So let's continue with CC Glass. Bring our height down to about 10, our displacement to about 500, and bring our softness to 8. And make sure you have the lightness, it's all on the lightness channel. In our light settings, we want to bring our light intensity down to about 40, and change the light height to point light. We want to create a slight hot spot on the planet as if the sun or some light source is hitting it. And this, this will help us do that. Now in the shading settings, this is where you really kind of inform how your material looks like it's interacting with light. This is not a metallic material, so we want to bring that down to zero. We want to up our roughness, so we want to bring that to maybe 0 0.80. And you can see you get more of a matte finish when you up the roughness. So let's just have a play with these settings. What's going on? Maybe we bring up the roughness a tad bit more. Okay, so we've already got a really cool looking effect, even if you weren't to use this for a planet. You've kind of got a mat that you can colorize and play with. And when you've got this kind of nice mat kind of a little bits of variance and gradients and edges, you can look at this as something that can almost absorb color. So to start that process, let's duplicate our planet base and delete these two effects. And let's use four color gradient in After Effects. And let's just change these all to blue for now. And let's change our blending mode to difference. So let's try and mess with the blending modes of our effect. Let's try screen. And this is interesting already. Even if you don't like the colors here, you're getting some, you're getting a massive amount of color variation and clashing and something you get in the real world. So let's try and start pulling from our values here. What we can do is we can bring down the opacity there. You can even play with the opacity here. And this is looking really cool already. And we have this movement through the scene. Now I would recommend really toying with this, really having a go at playing with, even pile on some effects that you want to play with or some ideas you have, because we're kind of rushing through this. But it, you can already see if I was to go in here and use terrain here. And use subscale instead. And use rocky instead. And you get, a, again, a different look, something, you know, bring up the contrast and you're getting kind of very different results and you can change the color. And each processing in precomposing something allows you to have control down to the to the first layer. So let's precompose this. And it's just. Shift control C and call this planet main. And we can copy that and bring it into our main composition. And we're going to use CC sphere to turn it into a. We're done. We are done. That is it. <laughs> I'm joking. We need to just add a little bit more finesse to this. So let's bring this up to 600. That's way too big. And we want to bring the intensity of the light up. Let's bring the ambience up. This is not a metal material, so we want some specular on here. Let's bring the roughness slightly up. And this is where it really starts to come together. 
Okay. And let's give this planet some rotation. Still a bit bright. Bring down the intensity a tad bit. Gonna diffuse. Now it feels like the planet has just been plopped into the scene. And that is because there's nothing kind of emitting. The light source would be hitting the planet and you'd be getting some kind of, you'd be getting something to feel like it fits in the scene. It doesn't look completely right. So let's duplicate our layer and keep CC sphere on. So after we've duplicated these two layers, I would change the name of our bottom layer that we duplicated to planet main and just put glow afterwards because this would be our glow layer. And again, this is quick. There are better ways to use glow in After Effects, but just to get to result faster, shoot up our glow radius, bring down our threshold so it affects more. We maybe just want to affect one side, bring up our intensity, maybe bring down the opacity in the planet main glow. And then maybe just to add a little bit more, add a glow to our actual planet. Bring up the ra radius and bring down the intensity. And you can play with the threshold as you please. So this is a good basis for you to start on and start experimenting with uh, fractal noise in more complex and layered ways. I do think it's important to understand, even though some somewhat rudimental tools that After Effects kind of comes with, understand those tools, because then you can understand how those tools have informed the plugins that work in After Effects. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch this tutorial series. Thank you and goodbye.